Hello and welcome back to another episode of Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that you can animate boundary prescribed motion and boundary prescribed final geometry in Oasis Primer? In this video, I'm going to cover the boundary prescribed motion animation functionality within Oasis Primer. It's also worth noting that Primer has the functionality of animating boundary prescribed final geometry as well. However, this model doesn't use that star keyword. Okay, so here I have a model with three crush tubes and the only real difference between them is their mesh density. I've got the prescribed motion window open here and I'm sketching all of the boundary prescribed motions. So you can see that there's a motion on all three of these rigid plates in the x direction and it's in the minus x and that's achieved by setting the VAD value to 2 so that's a displacement control and also a negative scale factor. If we look at the load curve here we can see that there's just a linear ramp and it's displacing up to 300 millimeters in the first 0.45 seconds. And then after that, it just plateaus and remains at 300 millimeters. To animate the boundary sky motions, all I need to do is click on the animate button here. And then I have to select which of the boundary prescribed motions I would like to animate. You can see again that the boundary prescribed final geometry option is grayed out because there aren't any to select. So I click on boundary prescribed motion button here, and then I can see those three boundary prescribed motions that I have in the model. And I'm just gonna click all and apply. And that will mean that all three of them will be animated. Then I have some options of tuning some of the input parameters. So the start time of the animation, the end time, that's zero and 0 0.5. That 0.5 corresponds to my control um, end time. So I'm happy to leave it with that and that will show me where they should end up in the final analysis. Then the number of frames, and that's just how this time interval is divided up. So we'll have 50 divisions in that time interval. A scale factor, which might be of interest if we want to magnify some of the displacements and visualize them, especially if it's quite small boundary described motions that we're looking at, just to check that we've got, say, the directionality of things correct. Often a common mistake is to apply an acceleration when we intended to apply maybe velocity or a displacement. So this tool can be used to help check that our intended application is what we are actually modeling. And then we also have this box here, which is to do with the time step. And that's just used by Primer to help compute the animation. So where things should be in time, and there may be cases when you want to input your own user value, particularly if you're using automatic time step control. So that option is just there for you, but you don't need to tweak it if you don't want to. Okay, so to play the animation, we simply press the play button here and we'll see that those three plates will move. Now, you might be wondering why nothing else is moving. And the reason for that is because the nodes on the ends of these crush tubes aren't actually tied to these rigid parts here. Instead, what we have is a contact defined. So if I just quickly go to the contacts and then I'll just sketch. And if we apply that one, we can see that basically the end surface of the rigid part is contacting that plate. But when we play the animation, it won't actually acknowledge those contacts there because what we're applying is a prescribed motion or acceleration or displacement. So that's just a specific part and it would bring along some of the nodes if they were tied and shared by the part that we're moving. In this case, it's just a contact. So that's why we see the animation leaving those parts behind and just moving the plates. We have some other toggles and controls here that we can use. So we have basically forwards and backwards in terms of the frames, we could jump to the end or to the beginning, or we can play and then pause animation at some point. We can also manually input a time that we are interested in. This has to lie between the range that we've got here. So I could say 0.25, and that will give me the position of the plates halfway through the analysis. We can also increase the frame rate, and that essentially speeds up the playing of the animation. So we press play here, and we can set it to the maximum 25. That will just accelerate the play. We could also reduce the number of frames so that if we made that 25 as well, the whole animation would play just in one second. There's also this option which is highlighted by default and that just makes the animation loop or repeat through. If we deselected that and press play, the animation would stop at the end point. 
Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to the animation tool. I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you what it might look like if we're using an acceleration or velocity plot. And for those, I might give the acceleration a magnification of 100 and the velocity a magnification of times 10, say, and update those, and then come back to animation. And you should clear those animations first because they've changed before reselecting them. So I'm going to select all of them, apply. And now it's computed them, I can play them, and we can see the animation playing through. And because I've deselected the repeat button, it's essentially stopping at the end. So if I click that again and let it repeat, we'll see those parts flying off. And we can see how initially the displacement controlled one is in the lead, but then the velocity takes over and then the acceleration takes over and so we can see that if we accidentally applied the wrong prescribed motion we would get very different behavior okay finally i'm just going to go to d3 plot and show you the final animation here and so we can see that yes indeed those plates did move and we're boundary prescribed motion and we can see that they stop at 0.45 seconds as we had defined them with the low curve and of course this time the tubes move along with it they crush because of the contact that is being captured so i hope you found this top tip useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next oasis top tips